Okay, here's how every drug I can think of works as fast as humanly possible. The classical psychedelics LSD, DMT, and psilocin, the active metabolite of psilocybin, are all partial agonists of the serotonin 2A receptor. Activation of this receptor is necessary for their psychotomimetic effects, and it's been shown that blocking this receptor aborts a trip. However, the fact that these drugs induce distinct styles of hallucinations may indicate that they differentially interact with this receptor, which is a phenomenon known as biased agonism. LSD also has an interesting property of sticking to this receptor, which may explain why its active life supersedes its biological half-life. On the topic of the serotonin 2A receptor, THC, which is found in cannabis, actually potentiates the effects of psychedelics at this receptor, which may explain some of its purported interactions with those drugs. However, THC's psychoactive effects are mostly caused by activation of the cannabinoid 1 receptor. Interestingly, CBD, which is also found in cannabis products, actually blocks the binding of THC at this receptor, and recent increases in the ratio of THC to CBD in many cannabis strains have likely changed the effect profile of cannabis products over the decades. I don't have a transition for this, so let's just talk about amphetamines. Most of the typical amphetamines work by forcing the release of dopamine, noradrenaline, and serotonin into the synapse. However, whereas amphetamine is mostly a releaser of dopamine and adrenaline, methamphetamine is more potent for the release of dopamine, and MDMA has a significant bias towards serotonin release, although it's likely that MDMA also works through other mechanisms that have yet to be elucidated. Touching a little bit on depressants, benzodiazepines work by enhancing the activity of GABA and its GABA-A receptors, with GABA being the main inhibitory neurotransmitter in the brain. And despite being called non-benzodiazepine, Z-drugs like Ambien work via the same mechanism but are selective for certain subunits of this receptor and therefore produce more sleep-specific effects. From depressants, let's move on to antidepressants, specifically those of the SSRI class, so Prozac, Zoloft, and Paxil. These drugs promote the accumulation of serotonin in the synapse where it can act on its receptors. But interestingly enough, although they increase serotonin and instantly, their antidepressant actions are delayed and take weeks to set in. It's likely that a downstream mechanism mediates their antidepressant effects. Moving back to depressants, alcohol is all over the place. At relevant concentrations, it interacts with several different receptors in the central nervous system, but it's believed that its predominant actions are on GABA-A receptors, much like benzodiazepines. However, they potentiate a different subset of GABA-A receptors that are insensitive to benzodiazepines, which means that alcohol overdose cannot be rapidly reversed by benzodiazepine antagonists, as it otherwise could with benzos. And an interesting factoid is that most of the alcohol hangover isn't caused by alcohol itself, but rather a metabolite known as acetaldehyde. So it's essentially like being under the influence of another drug. Most opioids induce pain relief and euphoria by activation of the mu opioid receptor, which through a short cascade of events causes dopamine release in the nucleus accumbens, thought to produce feelings of euphoria. However, most classical opioids have low affinities for the kappa opioid receptor, which is an opioid receptor that paradoxically produces feelings of dysphoria, while still producing pain relief. A very potent agonist of this receptor is salvinorum A, which is found in the salvia divinorum plant and is known to produce a rapid onset of intensely strange hallucinations. And we don't know how modafinil works, but if you want to see me try, here's these videos. I think I've yapped into the camera a little bit too much, so I'm going to end it here. But depending on how this is received, I might make another video. So let me know what other drugs you would like me to cover down below. Also, the pharmacology I covered is extremely oversimplified. So if you actually know what you're talking about and have run to the comment section to correct me. I probably agree with you. I just don't have the time to explain all that. But let me know nonetheless and let's talk. All right, stay safe and do your research. Bye.